What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Earlier today, I gave you my top 10 most disappointing teams of 2020, 2021. Today, I'm going to be, or er, now, I'm going to be giving you my top 10 most surprising teams, 2020, 2021. But before we get into this video, hey, leave a like, consider subscribing if you're brand new to the channel or you enjoy my, or you enjoy this video or any other of my content. We just reached 100 subscribers, as I talked about earlier today, which is crazy. Keep that number going up. Also, ring the bell so you can join Tailgate Nation. Leave a comment down below. Share the video with everyone you know as I'm trying to grow the channel as big as possible. And let's dive right on in to the video as I did with the last one. I'm going to give you some, my top six honorable mentions. And we're going to start with a couple teams in the SEC, Arkansas and Missouri. Now we'll start with Arkansas, again, a team that hasn't really been a football powerhouse in about a decade. But this year they showed some signs of improvement. They showed great signs of improvement uh, I thought this was a very good season if you're a, a Razorbacks fan. There's a lot to like going forward. Along with another team in the SEC, the Missouri Tigers. Man, I also did not think this team was going to do that great. But no, Missouri was still a very solid team overall. Uh, got into the top 25 poll a couple times. I didn't finish there, but still a very, very solid season. From Missouri, we'll move on to Army. Army had a great a uh, great season this year. I did not think Army was going to be anything special, uh, but they showed that they can compete with about anyone. They give Cincinnati a, a, a good fight. I shouldn't say they can compete with about everyone, but uh, Army showed that they can give some teams a good fight. Uh, Iowa, you guys know uh, I expected Iowa to fall off. They did not. Never count out Kirk Ferentz and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Rutgers, hey, winning games with Greg Schiano back at head coach. Let's hope they can keep that going in Boston College. I thought this team was going to be one of the worst teams in the ACC. They did not seem to miss A.J. Dillon that much. Let's get into the top 10. At number 10, I have the Indiana Hoosiers. Now, you guys might be thinking, why is Indiana here? Because they were surprising to me. Remember, this is my opinion. It starts with Michael Penix replacing Peyton Ramsey to perfection and more. Michael Penix was one of the best players in the country this year. He he just was. Um, I mean, with Peyton Ramsey going to Northwestern, you're like, all right, now we got to bring in Michael Penix. Let's hope things go well. And they did. The panic was immediately rid of if you are an Indiana fan, uh, scoring that game-winning touchdown against Penn State. Absolutely incredible play from Michael Penix. Fry Frogel, Ty Fry Frogel and Stevie Scott, their breakout years. Ty Fry Frogel, their wide receiver. I thought he was one of the best wide receivers in the country this year. Uh, and Stevie Scott, I also thought he was one of the best running backs in the country this year. Stevie Scott was great, showed he can run the ball uh, through the middle, showed he could break to the outside, can break tackles. Um, Stevie Scott played great, and Ty Farfogel just showed he can do a little bit of everything, make some flashy catches, make the easy catches, outrun guys. Both those guys had great breakout years, and their defense was very underrated. You look, 20 points a game, 378 yards. Their defense did not get talked about and even got criticized uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I thought their defense played great, uh, especially against a team like o Ohio State, who ended up going to play for the national championship game. Uh, a very, very good offensive team. Indiana was able to hold them when need be. Um, now, if Indiana would have won the game against Ole Miss, they would have been a little bit higher, but they're going to be at number 10. Number nine is Ball State. And after losing their first game, it did not hurt their morale. They went on to win seven straight, including the MAC championship in which they were underdogs and the bowl game against San Jose State, who you're going to see later in this video also in where they were underdogs. So Ball State really, really played well uh, late in the season. Drew Plitt had some elite play as well. Uh, he is the quarterback there at Ball State, and I kind of rid off Drew Plitt. I looked at Drew Plitt, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that guy's the quarterback at Ball State. Now, he won't have that good of a season. Nope. He had one of the best seasons out of any quarterback this year. Um very, very smart decision-making with the football in his hands. Also showed that if the pass is not there, he can run the ball. Uh, so Drew Plitt pr played pretty well this year. And they had excellent third-down defense. One of the best third-down defenses in all of the country. 
Uh, it didn't matter if it was third and one, third and inches, third and three, or third and 15. They would stop you. Um, so Ball State, quite a surprise this year. For me, they're at number nine. Number eight's the BYU Cougars. And a lot of you might be thinking, well, I knew BYU was going to be good. They had the pieces. Okay, I did not. BYU was a team in 2019-2020 that was a uh, I, I guess I guess disappointment looking at this season, but they 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 went six and six, seven and five I believe, uh, one of those two, and just looked average. Uh, but a big reason they went eleven and one this year was Zach Wilson playing like a top NFL quarterback, and he's probably going to get taken number two in the draft by the New York Jets, um, unless again trades happen. I am doing a mock draft, so you can look at that. But Zach Wilson played like a top NFL quarterback running the ball, passing the ball, making plays, uh, just Zach Wilson. Uh, I, I, I thought if he could have been a little more consistent and maybe if BYU would have played better competition, he could have been a finalist for the Heisman Trophy uh, easily. I loved watching Zach Wilson this year. Uh, the man has a future in the NFL. They had playmakers at running back and wide receiver, uh, so they were able to mix up uh, the signals on the offense, but Zach Wilson with his arm – uh, just trusted his wide receivers to go make some catches. And at that running back position, they had a couple guys that could just run all over uh, opposing defenses. Speaking of the defense, BYU had a much improved defense. He looked 15 points per game, 317 yards per game, much improved from the season before. And they had one of the top defenses in both of those categories in the country this year. Uh, has lots of great playmakers, uh, in every level of the defense. It was a great showing from BYU this season. Now, they are losing a lot on both sides of the ball, so we'll have to see if they can continue the success. My guess right now is no. Uh, but, hey, BYU, a very, very nice surprise this year for me there at number eight. Number seven is NC State, or North Carolina State, the Wolfpack. And to be honest with you, again, I did not expect much from this team. As you remember, I had them as, I believe, 14th or 13th in the ACC when I did my preseason power rankings. And I stuck true to that throughout the first couple games of the season. Sorry, I bumped you guys a little bit. But North Carolina State proved me wrong. And it started with their depth at the quarterback and wide receiver position. Didn't matter who was in a quarterback. Didn't matter who was on the field for wide receiver. Pass would seem to be completed somehow, some way. Uh, they had excellent depth at the quarterback position. Um, lots of guys able to run and throw the ball effectively. And at the wide receiver position, lots of guys were able to make plays, uh, go deep for passes, catch shallow passes, make the easy plays out run guys. They had a wide receiver that could do pretty much everything. And big reason why North Carolina State found success. Also, Zonovan Knight, talking about the other part of the offense. His running ability flourished this year. It was an absolute show. Every single time Zonovan Knight touched the football, uh, the man emerged as a great running back this year, and I expect him to do so in the coming years as well. And Peyton Wilson and Alan McNeil, two big key defensive guys for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. They were insufferable to opposing offenses, and by that I mean they were tenacious they were fast they got to the quarterback they could defend passes they collapsed on the running back they just did a little bit of everything and I believe uh, Paid Wilson led the team in tackles and interceptions I do believe as well and Alan McNeil um, led the team in sacks so very very good showing for North Carolina State this year after not a lot of people expected much from them myself included they're number seven Number six is San Jose State Spartans, seven and one, the one loss to Ball State. But uh, I felt like they were going to be worse than Ball State, so I put them significantly higher, and I just loved watching this team play. Nick Starkel, amazing play. He is the quarterback there at San Jose State, and when I first heard about San Jose State's run and how well they were doing, and it was mainly on college game day, and then I heard, so, uh, yeah, uh, Nick Starkel's playing great. I went, yeah, who? I don't know who this man is. And then I watched Nick Starkel play a game. I believe it was the Boise State game I watched. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Uh, Nick Starkel. Um, so, uh, 
very, very solid playmaking. Uh, also can run the ball as well. Nick Starkow can do a little bit of everything, uh, just what you expect from a college quarterback, but he did what was expected of him, plus a little bit more. And they had some sack machines on defense. So lots of guys able to get back to the quarterback, create pressure, uh, and able to just get in the way of the offense or uh, get in the way of the po uh, the opposing offense doing anything worthwhile, uh, really. Lots of guys getting uh, double-digit stacks um, for San Jose State this year. Hey, incredible, incredible showing. And Brett Brennan's likability and coaching ability. He is the head coach, uh, if you couldn't already tell. He is now one of my favorite head coaches in all of college football. I love the way he coaches. I love the energy he brings to the sideline. Even the energy he brings to practice. He goes into practice like it's a game. Uh, he goes into practice like it's the national championship. And Brett Brennan is easily one of the more likable coaches now that people know who he is. Uh, San Jose State, and uh, uh, with all the off-field stuff they were dealing with as well, there was a couple stories in there um, that I can't quite remember. But San Jose State, very, very impressive this year. For me, they're sitting high at number six. Number five is the Colorado Buffaloes. And this team, I didn't expect much from, but they competed in the Pac-12. Big reason why was, although while Sam Neuer wasn't great, now I know it's going to sound like a slam, but this, I mean, maybe kind of, but it's not supposed to be a slam. He wasn't great, but he got the job done. Uh, touchdown interception ratio was not where you want it, not where you would want it to be, but he would make throws. He would make throws. He could use his legs. Um, he did what was asked of him after um, Colorado, that quarterback position was going to be a question. It got filled by Sam Neuer pretty well. Uh, I feel like Sam Neuer uh, has a lot to improve on, however, uh, but definitely a very solid quarterback uh, as from what we saw this season. Jarek Broussard can flat out ball. Uh, the kid can catch the ball. He can run the ball. He can do pretty much anything you need him to do. Uh, Jarek Broussard is the Rondo Moore of the Pac-12. And he's also playing on a team with similar colors. Think about that for a second. <laughs> uh, no, but, I mean, Jarek Broussard had an absolutely amazing season this year. I see no reason he does not improve on that in the coming years. Big reason why Colorado ended up going 4-2. and two, And a big reason why their offense was much better than people expected it to be. Landman and Wells were sack machines. Now, while you might look at their defensive stats and say, well, that doesn't seem that good. You don't want to allow 30 or 30 plus points a game. You also don't want to allow 400 yards a game. That's just, that's just not good. Their defense is awful. Well, when you watch Landman and Wells, they are ballers. I mean, they get in the backfield, they pressure the quarterback, uh, if they can't get to him with their hands, they're going to be able to get in the way of his throw. I mean, they can just do anything on that defensive line, linebacker position, uh, respectively. Both those guys were uh, absolutely amazing this year. And while Colorado has still a lot to improve on, they made a big step up from where they have been in years past. Colorado's at number five. Number four, I have another Big Ten team, the Northwestern Wildcats. They went 7-2 and two this year after going 3-9 and nine the year prior and the year prior to that. They made the Big Ten championship. So it's this up-and-down cycle with Northwestern. But you think that it's going to continue. They are losing a lot of guys, but they had a terrific and intimidating defense. One of the best defense in the entire – one of the best defenses in the entire country. Uh, just about 16 points per game. 341 yards per game. Uh, Northwestern played great on the defensive side of the ball. There is no way to understate that um, or, uh, uh, or overstate it even. Northwestern had a great defense this year. Peyton Ramsey also had the season of his career, in my opinion. They brought him in as a transfer from Indiana. And Peyton Ramsey had a career year, man. I got to tell you, really like what Peyton Ramsey did this year for the Wildcats, brought some experience and some energy to that offense. 
which is the one critique I have about Northwestern this year is they could have been better offensively and they would have been better overall, but Peyton Ramsey still had a career year. Uh, bringing in an experienced quarterback like that definitely helped Northwestern out. And Pat Fitzgerald was just being Pat Fitzgerald. I mean, uh, the man is an excellent play caller. He's an excellent coach. And now it's going to be there for about another decade, right? Something like that. Just signed an absolutely huge uh, extension. Northwestern is going to be in the mix for a Big Ten title in the next coming years. If they can recruit well, Northwestern for me is at number four. Tulsa is at number three for me. And aside from that brawl against Mississippi State, I talked about it in my last video a little bit. Um, it was horrendous. It was horrifying. One of the worst things I've ever seen on the college football field. But Tulsa played well. And it started with Zayvon Collins showing that he has NFL talent. Uh, sorry, Zayvon Collins, not Zayvon Collins. Uh, but well, either way, it's correct. But uh, Zayvon Collins was absolutely terrific. Uh, the man can do anything you ask of him. He can cover passes and cover. He can cover passes and man. Uh, he can rush the quarterback. He can spy the quarterback. He's big. He's fast. He's athletic. I mean, he can do anything you ask him to. A big reason why Tulsa was so good this year. They had a balanced attack from their running backs and wide receivers. So they were able to mix up their offensive play calling. Um, so if they needed a running back in a certain situation, they had it. If they needed a wide receiver in a certain situation, they had it. Tulsa was just a very solid, they were not elite by any means, but a very, very good uh, offensive group from the Golden Hurricane this year. And they had a big, powerful defensive line, along with Zayvon Collins at that linebacker spot. The defensive line was also tenacious. Um, Tulsa had, in my opinion, one of the best defensive front sevens in the country this year, um, just by virtue of the eye test. I mean, watching this team play was outstanding. They give Oklahoma State a fight. Uh, they give Cincinnati a fight. They were, and they upset, UC, upset UCF. Um, Tulsa was a very, very good team this year. And it surprised me because Tulsa is just another team that, you know, um, Power 5 teams beat up on. Not this year because they didn't play for our Power 5 teams, but Tulsa showed that they can be contenders in the American Athletic. They're at number three. The Liberty Flames, the coolest name in college sports, 10-1 and one on the year. Here are some reasons why they had an explosive offense led by Malik Willis at that quarterback position. Uh, L L Liberty had one of the best offenses in the country, again, by virtue of the eye test. 38 points per game. 500, or excuse me, 480 yards per game uh, as well. Uh, Liberty could run the ball. They could throw the ball. Um, Malik Willis, uh, they had some great play calls in their bag. Liberty could do just about anything on the offensive side. They had quarterback seeking missiles on the defensive line, more specifically at the defensive end uh, part. Liberty, uh, again, those two starting defensive ends, some of the highest sacks, uh, some of the highest sack numbers in college football this year, uh, along with cute quarterback pressure numbers and quarterback hurries. Just absolutely, they were locked on the quarterback, and that was their goal is to get him on the turf. And they did it more times than not. It was a very, very good showing from the Liberty defense this year, and they were able to battle through, battle through who freezes on availability. He was unavailable for a couple games this season, but it didn't matter. Liber Liberty still went out and played well. And even battling through some Power 5 teams, uh, they, battled, or they battled through Virginia Tech. They were able to battle through Syracuse. Um, couldn't quite get past NC State, although they could have won that game, definitely. Liberty, very, very solid team this year. Very much a surprise there at number two. But we can't deny the number one surprise this year was Coastal Carolina. I mean, wow. What a team this was. Starts with the emergence of Grayson McCall. He is the quarterback. And before I saw, or excuse me, before um, I really knew too much about Coastal Carolina, I went, yeah, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? I knew about CJ Maribel, and he still played great this year. But Grayson McCall, I was like, who? This guy can play the quarterback position. I'm very excited to see how he improves in the coming years. 
they were not they were, were not afraid of competition. Uh, scheduling that BYU game was a big step in a game that they didn't really give much of a shot at. Or their their game that people didn't really give them much of a shot. Well, they went in and they were able to beat BYU. Uh, that says that they were able to beat Kansas. Um, Arkansas State was a solid team. They were able to manhandle them. Uh, able to beat Louisiana, App State, Georgia State, Georgia Southern. Lots of good summed out teams this year. And Coastal Carolina took care of them all. And they had a fantastic group of linebackers. Look, Coastal Carolina, one of the best group of linebackers in the country there. I said it. Um, when you just watch them play, they can do anything. Anything and everything at some of the highest levels uh, you've ever seen a, a Sun Belt team play at. I mean, Coastal Carolina was just all around very, very good team. They should be able to continue th their success next year, but we will have to wait and see. That's my top 10 surprise teams of 2020. 2021, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Also, do consider subscribing if you are brand new to the channel or you just enjoy my content. Turn on the notification bell so you do not miss an upload and you can join Tailgate Nation. Leave a comment down below. Tell me your top 10 surprising teams or your thoughts on this video. And also share the video with everyone you know. I'm trying to grow the channel as big as possible. So it would mean a lot if you could share the video with everyone you know who likes college football as much as you and me. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Goodbye.